Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back in, um, in Bern, and I'd like to thank, the, um, thank um, Suzanne Domenico and um, Antonio for the invitation and to congratulate them on uh, uh, organizing a very interesting conference. So I'm going to be talking about on some work I uh, 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 based on a paper from last year and some ongoing work with Dan is Israel and Alessandro Asati. And uh, as you'll see, it's also based on some work from some time ago with um, Atish Dabulkar. At least the, the work I'll be talking about is based, uses some of the ideas from there. And um, uh, Alessandro Sarti is a mathematician, so this collaboration involves um, quite a lot of algebraic geometry, mostly from her, um, her input. And I won't be talking much about any of that today, and I'll be concentrating on some of the more physical ideas and their implications. So um, a quick reminder about duality symmetries. Um, it would be familiar to all of you, I'm sure. That, um, but just to, um, to explain the context, um, Supergravities, of course, have got uh, continuous cl classical symmetries, um, E7 for four-dimensional n equals eight, for example, which are broken in the quantum theory to a discrete group or broken by gauging. String theory um, has discrete quantum duality symmetries, as in quantized supergravity, and um, often these duality symmetries are not correspond, do not correspond to field theory symmetries. And the three kinds of symmet uh, th uh, symmetries which will play, which will be of interest today, are T duality, um, which uh, is a perturbed symmetry on the torus, U duality, and in particular today, mirror symmetry, which is a perturbed symmetry of string theory on Calabi L spaces. Um, and the way I, they're going to play a role is the, their interaction with um, the geometry. So uh, we think about space-time as being constructed from local patches, and in principle, all symmetries of the physics could be used in, in gluing these together. The familiar stories are using diffeomorphisms to glue patches together to construct a manifold, and using gauge symmetries allows us to construct bundles over the manifold. And um, the new symmetries are not present in the field theory, um, the dualities, allow the uh, construction of new kinds of backgrounds because using these symmetries in the patching constructs new kinds of um, structures. And um, the name non-geometric has become attached to them, although they're not very non-geometric. There's a lot of geometry attached to them, so it's a particularly misleading name. Uh, and uh, patching with T-duality gives T-folds with U-duality U-folds and with mirror symmetry, mirror folds, and it'll be mirror folds which, be playing, which I'll be interested in mostly today. So just a, a caricature of what it means for it to have a, um, a T-fold patching, for example. T-duality exchanges a circle of radius R with a circle of radius 1 over R, and what that means is a string theory on a circle of radius R is equivalent to string theory on a circle of radius 1 over R with momentum modes in one identified with uh, winding modes on the other, and vice versa, in the familiar way. So in the T-fold, suppose we had a space which had a circle fibration. I caric uh, caricature that by having a cylinder here, but it could be a product of a, uh, a circle with some other space. And um, here we um, can try and glue this to another one, uh, another um, similar structure, uh, where, we glue, where this has got radius R and this has got radius 1 over R. And a T-fold would, would be gluing these two spaces together. Here they have the same topology, uh, but um, the geometry is very different. So what this would mean is that um, the metric would be discontinuous. Um, the metric would jump from giving a radius R here to a radius 1 over R here. And so the, the metric would not be a smooth tensor field, and we'd be having a more general kind of structure arising. And... Um, Momentum modes would be glued to winding modes and vice versa. So it's not a, cons cons a conventional smooth geometry, and it's not something which would be allowed in um, gravity, but it is allowed in string theory. And in more complicated examples, the duality patching can, allow, uh, can also change the topology, not just the geometry, so, which makes it much harder to draw pictures. Um, but here's a picture of, of, of what happens if you try and... Um, 
glue, uh, if you have a, a, a cylinder which is growing from a, a small radius to a large radius and then you try to glue them together, you get um, uh, a structure like this. So, um, what I'll be talking about today is um, non-geometric um, versions of Calabial geometries. So, let me, so what I'll be looking for is reductions to four-dimensional Minkowski space, which will be non-geometric in the sense that I've just described, and um, will be such that for type two, it gives rise to n equals two supersymmetry in four dimensions. In other words, the same amount of supersymmetry preserved by compactifying type two on a Calabial. And so, um, this um, is the excuse for calling, referring, it to, to referring to it as a non-geometric Calabial geometry. And one of the features of the non-geometric type reduction is that it fixes many more of the moduli than um, a conventional Calabial compactification. And so one of the um, motivations for this is understanding um, more general kinds of compactifications which perhaps would have far fewer moduli. So these will be mirror folds, which will involve mirror symmetry transitions in gluing together local patches. And it will give, <coughs> and because it preserves n equals two supersymmetry in four dimensions, um, it, will give, it will give rise to theories with n equals two Minkowski vacua. And we will see that it can be thought of as giving a low energy gauge for d equals four um, supergravity, um, where the um, extent, the, um, the local supersymmetry is spontaneously broken by the background to n equals two. And, um, at, and um, the moduli um, develop a potential. Um, the, scalar, the scalar fields have a, a potential. And um, the Minkowski space vacuum is at a global minimum of the potential with zero cosmological constant. At the minimum of the potential, we get uh, a structure which has a complete string theory um, construction um, as a superconformal field theory arising from an asymmetric Gettner model. So it gives a, a nice picture of, um, so we get a nice, f a full stringy picture of what happens at the um, critical point. And so the um, non-geometric reduction has a full stringy um, picture at that point. And uh, as we'll see, it has, um, the structure we'll find is um, suggestive of um, a novel kind of geometric structure. And we'll come to that at, towards the end. Um, it gives a new class of um, compactification of um, reductions to four dimensional Minkowski space. And so in a sense, it's enlarging the, the landscape of um, supersymmetric compactifications and um, it may well be that, um, that um, non-geometric type structures are in fact um, generic. Um, there certainly seems to be uh, much more which is possible in the non-geometric picture than is possible with it. Well, it, at first sight, it looks like there's a lot, a lot which is possible within a non-geometric framework. And so this is um, perhaps the beginning of trying to understand a bigger landscape. And... Um, uh, and one thing which is intriguing is that there are various sorts of, uh, there, are very there are all sorts of no-go theorems, perhaps, I mean, for example, to do with ones of putting flux on uh, compact uh, manifolds and so on. Um, and these, this more general class might provide ways of escaping some of these no-go theorems. And again, this is uh, just the beginning of trying to understand um, the, the, the general structure and the sort of things which could arise here. So, um, there are some earlier examples of this kind of, of the kind of structure I want to talk about. There was some, as an earlier, early paper by Kawai and Sugawara, which constructed mirror folds similar in spirit to the ones I'll be talking about, but ones which um, didn't preserve any supersymmetry. Um, Blumenhagen et al. Um, constructed um, Gepner models from non-geometric quotients of Calabi conformal field theories. But these had a non-trivial fixed point, so these were intrinsically stringy. There wasn't a separation of scales. Um, so whereas the kind of structure I'll be talking about uh, in the work with um, Israel and Sati, um, again, start has a, um, 
uh, an asymmetric, a Gettner model from an asymmetric quotient. Here I'll be starting from the K3 cross T2 conformal field theory. But the quotient we'll be taking that is involved here is freely acting, so it's a freely acting orbifold. So the supersymmetry breaking scale is not fixed at the string scale, um, and that means that supergravity provides a good low energy description. And the, the supergravity construction which corresponds to that is um, a shirk schwartz reduction. Um, we heard, we heard a, a lot about these kinds of um, reductions um, this morning from Carlo, and he talked about some of the different names that they have. And um, some of the structures I'll be talking about are very similar to some of the ones that uh, he was talking about. Um, so again, so here we have a freely acting orbifold, and here we have a, a shirk schwartz um, reduction or, or, uh, in the supergravity, and then the stringy extension of that. Um, I'll explain a bit about that. And this is also um, reminiscent of s something which, um, by some work by Candela et al., which they referred to as G-theory, which again had um, K3 bundles, but ins instead of over a two torus, over CP1 with um, degenerate fibers and U duality monodromies. Um, so, um, th so the construction we'll be talking about is rather distinct from this, but it's, this is. Um, another piece of work which is um, similar in flavor and constructs other kinds of non-geometric backgrounds. So um, let me start by a quick review of something which will be familiar to most of you, um, just to set up some notation and uh, s um, start to develop the relevant uh, details. So um, if we think about um, uh, the shirk schwartz reduction of supergravity, um, we start off with supergravity in D dimensions with a global duality group G. This could be E6 in five dimensions. Um, the scalars take values in a coset space, and um, the fields generically transform under um, the action of the group G. Some fields will be in linear representations. The scalar fields will transform under a nonlinear realization but I'll, use, I'll just denote the, the group action in this way in general. And then if we reduce um, all the fields um, on the circle, and um, if we let y be the coordinates on the circle and xm the remaining d minus 1 coordinates, we, um, give the we have the ansatz that the fields depend on the, coordinate, the circle coordinate y by a y-dependent g transformation. And um, part of the, miracles of, uh, the, the miracle of this construction is that then, uh, because G was a symmetry, even though it was a global symmetry, not a local symmetry, the Y dependence then drops out um, to, to allow, um, from the, uh, a certain subsector of the theory to construct a dimensional reduction to D minus one dimensions. And this is characterized by a monodromy. As you go around the circle, the fields um, come back to themselves by a G transformation, which is given by this. And uh, typically, we'll take the, the Y dependence of the G transformation to be an exponential. So we have a Lie algebra element N. And so the monodromy would just simply be given in this way. Um, if we reduce on an N torus instead of a circle, we get a monodromy for each circle. We require them to commute. Uh, conjugating with G gives an equivalent theory related by a field redefinition, so it's characterized by monodromy up to conjugacy, and um, gives, r gives rise to a consistent truncation of the supergravity to give a gauge supergravity in D minus N dimensions. And the fields that are twisted, um, by which I mean that um, some of the field, f we're choosing a particular G, um, G transformation, a particular element of the group G, um, for a particular element of the group G, some fields will transform and some will be invariant. The ones will be invariant will, will be untwisted, will not, be, will not have any Y dependence, and they remain massless. The ones which get some Y dependence will, become, will typically become massive. So the mass, and, and in particular, the mass matrix is given by the twist, and the mass matrix is given explicitly by formulae uh, involving this matrix N. So the lifting of string to string theory, the duality group is broken to a discrete subgroup, the U-duality group, 
uh, or the T duality group in other contexts, in the heterotic context, uh, which is the automorphism group of the charge lattice. And the moduli space is reduced to the quotient of this by the discrete group. And now, for the consistency of the string theory reduction, the monodromies must be in the discrete group, not the, uh, which are the proper, proper quantum symmetries. Um, although um, this ANSATS involves the continuous group, it, but the important thing is that the monodromies must be in the discrete group, which in effect gives rise to a nonlinear quantization of the, of the monodromy, um, and in particular of the mass matrix constructed from N. So the, the mass, the, the monodromy must be um, in this discrete group, which is quantizing the mass matrix, giving a nonlinear kind of quantization of the, mass ma of the masses. And um, if the d-dimensional theory comes from higher dimensions by compactifying on some other space n, like a torus, then this story lifts to an, a bundle of... Um, this space over this space. So, um, what I have in mind here is that um, suppose we um, compactify, say, on K3 or T4, going down to six dimensions, and then go down further on a circle down to five dimensions then um, we're allowing um, a monodromy around this circle, um, which is acting through the duality group G. The duality group G will be acting as an automorphism of the conformal field theory on the T4 or the K3. Um, in some cases, it might be as, 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 a, a, transformation of the, as a transformation of these. So, for example, it might be, some of these transformations might be a diffeomorphism of the K3 or the T4. And then the monodromy would mean that as you went round the circle, the, um, the K3 or the T4 would come back to itself by a diffeomorphism. And in that case, you'd be constructing a, a K3 or a T4 bundle over the circle. And, th and that means that the whole um, shirk schwartz reduction down to from 6 to 5 lifts to compactification from 10 down to 5 on a circle bundle, on a K3 or T4 bundle over the circle. And that's the standard kind of geometric compactification. And what we want to, uh, what we're going to be doing is generalizing that to allow um, the monodromy to include T dualities on T4 or U dualities on, for the theory on T4 or um, dualities or K3 dualities involving mirror symmetries or U dualities acting on the K3. And so as we go around the circle, the, it's coming back to itself not by a diffeomorphism, but one of, by these, one of these duality transformations. And in this way, we construct a non-geometric space. Um, so the lift from 6 up to 10, or from 5 up to 10, would be compacted, would be a reduction on the non-geometric space given by um, a, um, a, um, a T-fold or a mirror-fold where locally the structure is T4 or K3 cross S1, but the, globally there's a twist by uh, an element of a duality group. And I'll make that much more precise as we go along. So... Um, So in the case uh, where uh, reducing from, say, 10 to 6 on a torus and then uh, reducing on a further um, torus, um, here I talked about the case where it was a circle, but here we replace that by an end torus, then for the bosonic string, reducing on the first, on this, this torus, we get an, uh, a T-duality group, an automorphism, a symmetry group, which is the T-duality group ODDZ, allowing monodromies which are in this group constructs a T-fold, and, um, and there's, and this is, and there's a, um, a large um, body of work on the structure of this story and, and on the T, how the T-fold uh, story develops. In particular, there's a natural formulation in terms of um, 
a, du a doubled torus in which um, you include uh, coordinates both conjugate to momentum and conjugate to winding, on which the ODDZ acts through a diffeomorphism. And then we construct um, the total space is, a, is an actually a geometric bundle of the doubled space over um, the um, TN. Um, and so we get, we, in this way, we have a, um, a nice picture of the T-fold in terms of um, um, a, a geometry in this um, doubled story. And this has a nice formulation in terms of double field theory. Um, so that's a story which has been developed um, quite a lot over the years. And we'll be looking at the, um, this kind of structure which arises if instead we use K3. So some, a quick reminder about some, some of the, the K3 story. If we take the 2A supergravity and compactify on K3, we end up with a, um, a duality symmetry uh, where you have a global symmetry G um, and the scalars uh, and there's, uh, are in the coset space G over H, where G is 0420. And this gives rise to, um, to compactify on K3 gives rise to, sorry, this should say 1, 1, supergravity in six dimensions. And then if you further reduce on a T2, we get um, N equals 4 supergravity in four dimensions, where we have a G over H coset um, with 0622 as the group G. And then there's an extra factor of SL2 over U1 involving the um, axion and diloton in the usual way. Uh, but I'll just be focusing on this part of the moduli space. And then um, the Schirk-Schwartz reduction um, generalization of this is um, a familiar story where we take, start off from the six-dimensional theory with um, 0622 symmetry, compactify on T2, and we allow a monodromy on each of the two circles in 0420. Um, and this is a, a familiar um, Schirk-Schwartz reduction uh, giving rise to n equals four gauge supergravity in four dimensions. And um, so the details of the bosonic sector are given, for example, in the paper by Reed Edwards and Spaniard. So the fermions, um, um, if you follow the way the, the duality symmetries work on the fermions, the fermions have monodromies in um, the, it's only the group H which acts on the fermions. And so the monodromies lead, give rise to monodromies for the fermions involving this group H, or rather a double cover of that. In fact, it's just a double cover of the first factor, um, not of the second factor. And um, if we look at um, so the spin four subgroup of pin four, that's um, SU2 cross SU2. And so the monodromies are essentially an SU2 cross SU2 cross O20. Now, if you look at the gravitini, the gravitini are singlets under the O20, but there are four gravitini in six dimensions, and they transform under, um, so that one of them is a doublet under the first SU2 and singlet under the second, and the, and the other one is a doublet under the second SU2. And so, um, the mono, if the, if the f as I mentioned earlier, if the fields are untwisted by the monodromy, they remain massless. So a quick way of seeing how many supersymmetries are preserved is by seeing how many of the gravitini remain massless and how many become massive. So if the monodromy is just in the O20, um, the gra both gravit all the gravitini are untwisted, and we get a reduction which preserves 16 supersymmetries. If we have monodromies in both of the SU2s, all the gravitini become massive and all the supersymmetry is broken. But if we have a monodromy which is in one of the SU2s and the O20 and not on in the other, then half of the gravitini will remain massless, and half will become massive, and we have a breaking of the 16 supersymmetries down to eight supersymmetries. And this will be the case we'll be looking for. So we're going to be looking for cases where the monodromy is in one of these, is the monodromy is um, only in one of these two SU2s. So K th K3, as will be... Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good point. So it's the, it, some of the, as I said at the beginning, it's some of the, the terminology is, the use of the word non-geometric is misleading. So the, po point, the point of view of the supergravity going down from six to four this is something which people have been doing since the 70s, and it's, it's an old construction. 
What I'm interested in is how you lift that up to 10 or 11 dimensions. And in, uh, so in the case when the, um, the monodromy is, um, acts as a diffeomorphism on the K3, I'll say what that means in a bit more in a the moment, then you're constructing a K3 bundle over T2. But in the cases when it acts through um, a, a U-duality transformation, you're constructing something which is not a geometric bundle over the T2, but is, um, in the cases I'll be talking about, is, is a mirror fold, um, which is locally K3 cross T2, but the transition functions involve mirror transformations. And so in that sense, the 10-dimensional picture is, is a, um, something, is, is one of these, uh, as a mirror fold, uh, and which... Um, some pe and the, um, the standard terminology is to call that non-geometric. Um, I'll, I'll make it precise in a moment, but um, it's, it's like the, the T... F if I was talking about the heterotic dual, which I will in a moment, then I'd be using T-duality rather than um, one of these more, non uh, more exotic symmetries. And then we'd be talking about... Um, if you, you've got a torus um, bundle, uh, you've got a t product of a one torus, of a four, say a four torus with a T2, and as you go around each circle, the four torus comes back with, not with a diffeomorphism to make a, if it was, came back with a diffeomorphism, it would be making a four torus bundle over T2. If it comes back with a T duality, a big circle becomes a small circle, and what you're constructing is a T fold, which is um, something which, um, is, makes perfect sense within string theory because T-duality is a symmetry of the string theory, but doesn't make sense, for example, in general relativity where you can measure the difference between a big circle and a small circle. So it's, it's that sense which it's, we're talking about it. Um, that is, that's the structure I'm talking about. And, um, um, and I think the, the, the no, it, it's... Um, you know, I think non-geometric is a bad, is a, is, as I said, it's a bad name for it, but that's the structure I'm talking about. Okay. Any more questions while I have paused? Okay. Um, because it's, there's a question about... Um, the global form of the of the groups. Um, um, there's, a, there's a slight there's a, there's a subtlety which I don't want to get into about the extra Z two factors, but I'm happy to talk about it after. Um, so um, in the bosonic string, it's there's a question about whether when you talk about T dualities, um, for example, whether whether you allow whether you stay within proper symmetries which take you from 2A to 2A or whether you include in the T-duality group the transformation which takes you from 2A to 2B. And there's so, so some ambiguity in what you say about that. So for, some, for the, my purposes, I'll just be concentrating on the spin-4 part of it in any case. So that Z2 won't be um, relevant here. Um, so a quick reminder about some of the f essential features of K3. There, there are two compact Ricci flat Kähler manifolds uh, in four dimensions, and K3 is the non flat one. It has SU2 holonomy, so it's hyper Kähler. And the, an important feature is the fact that the manifold is unique up to diffeomorphism. Um, the, met, the, met, the Ricci flat metric, however, depends on 22 moduli, and the moduli space is. Um, 0319 divided by its compact subgroup and then modded out by a discrete subgroup of that, of that. And the 0319Z can be understood as acting on K3 through large diffeomorphisms of K3. Um, yeah, hyper Kähler. So, so as here I said Ricci, fl Ricci flat Kähler in four dimensions is the same as hyper Kähler. Um, in four dimensions, um, because um, SU2 is the same as SP1, it's, uh, so in, higher, in six dimensions, there's a difference between Ricci flat Kähler and in, in, higher dimension, in eight dimensions, Ricci flat Kähler is weaker than hyper Kähler, but in four dimensions, it's the same. Yeah. 
I mean, isn't that a particular, it's a, that, I think that's a particular K3 surface. Um, so it's a, I think it's a particular point, it's, I think it's a particular point in this moduli space, if I remember correctly. Um, so you have a 22-dimensional moduli space, and I think you're talking about one point in that. If I so the cohomology is, um, again, familiar to most of you. There's um, 22 so, uh, two forms, and... Um, H0 and H4, there are no odd forms and there are, um, no, there are no odd co cohomology and there's just um, a one-dimensional zero, naught form and four form. There's a natural metric on forms given by the wedge product, integrated wedge product, and that gives a space of, uh, harmonic, of harmonic two forms a metric, um, a metric uh, under which it has signature 3, 19, and there are three self do there are three dimensional space of self-dual two harmonic two forms which give the hypercalar structure and there are 19 anti-self-dual two forms. And together with this metric, H0 and H4 have, um, make a space with um, signature 1, 1. So the total cohomology is, uh, is a real cohomology is R420 uh, where you, when you add all of these things up. And the lattice of integral cohomology is... Um, um, for H2, um, it's uh, an even self-dual lattice. So that means that it must be a sum of E8 lattices and the two-dimensional lattice U which of signature 1, 1, which is even at self-dual. And this is preserved by an automorphism group, which is the automorphism group of this lattice, which is properly written like in this way. And I will often lazily rewrite it, abbreviate it to this which is, um, but, but whenever I write this in future, I'll mean the automorphism group of this lattice. So, so that, that two lattices are the same in the same way, even self-dual. The other one is equal to Yeah, and it's not that one, sorry, yeah. So there's more information. It turns out that, sorry, yeah. Um, there's more information. It turns out that for K3, it is this one. It didn't have to be, and... Uh, uh, from, from, for at least from what I said, it didn't have to be, but this is the lattice it is. Um, and for the total cohomology, there's an extra factor of U, and um, the automorphism of, of the group of that, which I'll refer to as this, um, preserves this charge lattice, and in fact gives an automorphism group of the conformal field theory. And um, so the moduli space, the the moduli space of the, um, con of the conformal field theory or of the supergravity is then this co-set space modded out by um, the, the set of transformations pres the preserving this lattice. So um, the O420, the, the discrete subgroup um, consists of the large diffeomorphisms we've talked about, um, shifts of the B field by um, integral, uh, by harmonic two forms, and the rest of it is um, non-geometric, and, and this will be the part which I'll be particularly interested in. They can't, it can't be understood in terms of uh, geometric transformations on K3. And so the idea is we'll compactify, we'll look at this 2A string compactified down to, on, to six dimensions on K3, compactify on a further T2 with the monodromies which are required now to be in the discrete group, uh, not the continuous group which would be allowed in supergravity. So in particular, this leads to nonlinear quantization, non uh, quantizations of the masses. So of course, there's a heterotic dual to, the, to all this. The 2A string on K3 is dual to the heterotic string on T4. So um, the 2A string on um, a non-geometric bundle, so we need a better word than bundle here, where you've got um, K3 fibers over T2 with uh, non-geometric transitions or non-geometric monodromies goes over to a T4 bundle over T2 with um, T-duality transitions. So it, it's making a T-fold. And so the double, and so the, we construct, uh, the, the heterotic dual would be a, a T-fold construction over T2. And these are related by um, a strong weak coupling duality. So the strong coupling limit of this would give the rise to this and vice versa. But um, somewhat surprisingly, it turns out that um, the algebra algebraic geometry of the K3 picture 
gives us a lot more structure to actually construct, find the monodromies that we need and actually construct the, bundle, the, the, store, the, the space uh, precisely in a way which would be uh, more or less hopeless starting from the heterotic side. And I'll explain why that is in a moment. So um, before going on to that, I want to um, refer back to the, my um, old paper with Atish Dabalkar, uh, where we looked at um, string theory compactifications with duality twists in uh, a, discrete, a discrete group of this kind. Um, and um, there are two results there which will be uh, very important for us today. So we have some non-compact group G and this, the moduli space is um, G over H identified where H is a compact subgroup, maximal compact subgroup of G uh, identified under the action of the discrete subgroup. And um, so we'll be interested in the points in the moduli space given by G over H identified under this which give Minkowski space minima of, um, the, sh of the scalar potential. And these give, it turns out, give right, correspond to, what we showed was these correspond to the points in moduli space which are fixed under the action of um, the monodromy. So finding the, 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 minima, the minima of the scalar potential corresponds to finding the points in the moduli space which are fixed under the action of the monodromy. And secondly, um, if a monodromy ha for a monodromy to have a fixed point, that will happen if and only if this is in a, an elliptic conjugacy class, and I'll explain what that means in a moment. But it's a generalization of what's meant by elliptic conjugacy for SL2. So let's talk about the, f the um, to illustrate this, let's consider the example of SL2. So SL2R, um, is, is, is a group which has um, three conjugacy classes, um, the elliptic um, which is w of elements which have got trace less than two, the parabolic of elements with trace which are conjugate to tr which have got trace two, and the hyperbolic which have got trace greater than two. And um, for SL2Z, however, there's the structure of conjugacy classes is much richer. Um, for the, uh, again, they can be split into elliptic, hyperbolic, and um, parabolic, corresponding to the same criteria as for SL2R. Um, it for the hyperbolic, it turns out that there's an infinite number of conjugacy classes which are, have a, a very strange and sporadic structure related to, um, with some interesting number theory structure. But for the co elliptic conjugacy classes, there are precisely four conjugacy classes which generate groups, uh, which generate groups Z2, Z3, Z4, and Z6. And um, because they're elliptic conjugacy classes, each of them is conjugate under SL2, as an SL2R conjugacy class is to a rotation. So these are, um, so what we're looking for is um, integral matrices which are conjugate to a rotation. And it turns out there are only four two by two matrices. And it's, it's actually quite a hard problem finding uh, such, um, term, such matrices. And um, what we'd be interested in is the anal analogous statement for uh, 0420. So we're looking for 24 by 24 integral matrices which are conjugate to rotations. And that turns out to be a very, very hard problem in principle. Um, but here we have um, extra structure, and from the result I told you, this, is, this should be related to fixed, um, these conjugacy classes should be related to um, um, fixed points um, under the action, of, and, and hence to minima of the scalar potential. So if we look at um, the, um, cos the uh, moduli space SL2R over U1, first of all gives the upper half plane, and then identifying under SL2Z restricts us um, to a fundamental um, domain which we can take as usual to be this um, shaded region here. And then if we look at the um, fixed points um, 
there's this point here, which is fixed under Z2 and Z4, and this point here, which is the same as this point here, this side and this side are identified. Um, this point here is invariant under Z3 and Z6. So finding the um, fixed points um, here um, corresponds to finding the elliptic. So the only uh, elements of SL2Z which have fixed points are the ones which correspond to elliptic conjugacy classes. And um, if, we look at, if one looks at this, um, the um, Schwartz potential, if one uses a monodromy which is M6 or M3, then the point in the moduli space where there is a um, minimum of this potential is precisely here. And if we chose M2 or M4, it would be precisely here. So um, at, um, at each fixed point, the monodromy generates a discrete group. Um, in the SL2 case, it was, um, so this PI should be downstairs. In, for the uh, SL2, it was um, Z2, Z3, Z4, or Z6. So uh, PI was 2, 3, 4, or 6. Uh, at such a point, at a fixed point for a particular monodromy, um, the, the point in mod the moduli, at this point in moduli space, the Shirk Schwartz type reduction becomes an orbifold, a freely acting orbifold by the quotient by um, the monodromy, which is acting as, which leaves, which is now at this point in moduli space, because it's a fixed point, acts as an automorphism, which preserving that uh, structure, together with a shift. Um, in the circle by um, um, 2 pi divided by p, so one pth of a rotation. And in the case when um, the, the monodromy was geometric, this would construct an orbifold of the type we heard about this morning. Um, if it was a t-duality monodromy, it would construct an asymmetric orbifold. And I'll be interested in the case where we're using K3 superconformal field theory automorphisms and this gives something which is, can be thought of as a kind of asymmetric Gettner model. And such. And um, the work I'll be, I'll be talking about is based on a class of these models constructed by Israel and Terry. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've seen that the reduction with a duality twist um, becomes an orbifold at the minimum of the potential with an explicit superconformal field theory construction. And what the, um, the whole story I've been talking about buys us is it, it tells us how, how this extends, this orbifold picture extends to the whole of the moduli space. The, the, mod, the conformal field theory construction constructed um, uh, a reduction at one particular point in the moduli space, but didn't tell you what happened as you went away, away from that. So here we are identifying an effective low energy supergravity theory, which we understand in complete detail. So we have complete control over the low energy physics in this way. And, at the, at, and we have complete control of the string theory because we have, at the minimum, because we have an explicit superconformal field theory construction. And a general point in the moduli space is not a critical point, it will be um, the, the scalar potential will have some slope and you'll be, and the general point in the critical place point will be um, at some point where um, part way up this, um, partly up the um, slope of the potential. But a, a general point, so that would mean it would not give rise to a Minkowski space solution, but there are often, for example, domain wall type solutions which could arise in that context. So let's... Um, turn to um, the case in point. So we're looking at um, string theory compactified first, two-way string theory compactified first of all on K3 down to six dimensions. And then we want to compactify on a further two circles with two monodromies M1 and M2. Now we need um, these monodromies to be in elliptic conjugacy classes uh, in order that there be a fixed point and that there would then be a, um, um, and hence a, a Minkowski minimum of the potential. And secondly, we want the monodromies to be only, to be trivial in one of the two SU2s sitting inside O4. 
So we want elements of O420Z, which overlap with, um, with for supersymmetry, only involve one of the SU2s, and um, for, um, and for um, elliptic conjugacy class, we require it to be a conjugate to a rotation. So this square brackets means, a conju means the, um, the conjugacy class. Um, so we require that up to conjugation, it be an, a rotation which is in fact in um, SU2 cross o, O20. And any such monodromies will give Minkowski vacuo with n equals two supersymmetry. But as I mentioned before, finding 24 by 24 integral matrices which have this property is uh, a very hard open problem and um, it's not known how to solve it in general. But um, it turns out that um, for the cases we're looking at, algebraic geometry constructs explicit solutions to these which we found uh, enable us to explicitly construct these 24 by 24 integral matrices and hence to give um, Minkowski space vacuo with n equals two supersymmetry. So, this, so the way this works involves um, Um, I think th there's a number of the ones which will be constructed in the way that I'm going to describe then I think there's a list but I think um, the ones which have uh, some other construction I don't know it's an open problem I would expect it to be a large finite number but um, and, you know, of course this whole story has got anal analogues for other discrete groups um, other, but um, I'm just concentrating on this particular one. So um, to proceed, I'm going to need to talk about mirror symmetry for K3. But to do that, um, first of all, I remind you about Calabi-L mirror symmetry. Um, the, the, the key point is that the moduli space of a Calabi-L space factorizes into a complex structure, moduli space, and a Kähler moduli space. And the mirror Calabi-L has these moduli spaces interchanged. The mirror M, M bar has this complex structure moduli space given by the Kähler moduli space of the original one, and so on. Um, for K3, uh, it, the story is different. So first of all, the, the moduli space doesn't factorize. Um, so, um, and that's because, uh, that's a reflection of the fact that all K3s are diffeomorphic. And so that means that naively there's no mirror symmetry. But if we restrict ourselves to algebraic K3 surfaces, then the moduli space of, Calabia of conformal field theories does in fact factorize. So by uh, algebraic, I mean um, K3s which are realized as um, solutions of um, quasi-homogeneous polynomials in um, weighted uh, complex projective space. And um, for such um, K3s, which arise um, from algebraic geometry, then there is a factorization into a complex structure moduli space and a Kähler moduli space characterized. Um, um, so there's a whole, um, they split into classes characterized by a particular number known as the Picard number. And um, for a Picard number rho, the complex structure moduli space is this, and the Kähler moduli space is this. And then there's a mirror symmetry which um, exchanges these two factors, which constructs a new algebraic K3, which, um, by, um, which has got these two factors interchanged. And there's a, there's a very nice um, algebraic geom geometric story which tells you how, given an algebraic K3, to find the mirror one. Um, but I, I won't tell you about that today. But if you're interested, uh, I refer you to our paper. So, uh, to cut a very long story quite short, the result of a lot of work is that the, uh, autom the automorphisms which are needed to construct the monodromies uh, that, um, are constructed um, in the following way. So, I have uh, an algebraic K3 surface X and mu being the mirror, trap, mi the mirror map I just referred to, which takes X to X tilde. <laughs> And we have sigma p being a diffeomorphism of x um, such that it, its um, pth power is 1. 
And there's a diffeomorphism of X tilde, um, whose, uh, which raised to the pth power again gives one. And then um, the, the automorphism that does the job uh, turns out to be, um, we start off with this diffeomorph, we start off with X, we do a diffeomorph, act on it with a diffeomorphism. Then we uh, do a mirror transformation taking it to X tilde. We do the corresponding mirror transformation uh, diffeomorphism of X tilde. And then we use the inverse mirror map to take us back to X. And this gives a, an automorphism of X. And for suitable X and sigma P, this acts on the charge lattice by an O420Z transformation that satisfies precisely the criteria that I'd asked for. And so the construction is using such automorphisms for the monodromies. So perhaps um, to give a little bit more insight into how this works. Um, so we, the sort of um, our surfaces we construct um, can be constructed in um, a space of four, a weighted a projective space of four um, complex dimensions, and we'd have a f satisfied by um, given by an equation, so x1 plus some f of x2, x3, x4 equals zero. So for suitable choices of f and p, this will um, define a K3 surface. And this has an automorphism under which um, x1 goes to zeta x1, where zeta is a pth root of unity. And there's a... The mirror turns out to have the same form, x tilde 1 to the same p, plus some new polynomial of x tilde 2, x tilde 3, x tilde 4, equals 0. And there's a long and complicated story about how you go. So the mirror transformation essentially is take, taking f to a new polynomial f tilde. And there's a long and complicated story about how, given f, you find f tilde. But this also has uh, a, an automorphism where this goes to zeta x1 tilde, where, again, zeta is a p root of unity. I guess I should call it that. And this is the... Um, sigma p, and this is um, the sigma p t. So these have a very natural; these automorphisms have a very natural action in the algebraic geom geometric picture. Um, and um, there's quite a remarkable story that these give rise to th the way these act on the charge lattice or on the lattice of integral cohomology is precisely by an O420Z transformation that is both elliptic and supersymmetric. So in this way, um, we construct um, certain generalizations of Calabi R vacu vacua, which um, are, are referred to misleadingly as non-geometric Calabi R vacua. Um, the key feature is they give rise from a type two string theory to a Minkowski vacua with n equals two supersymmetry at the minima of the potential, it gives rise to, there's a string construction in terms of an asymmetric Gettner model, which can be realized as an explicit um, construction involving a Landau-Ginsberg formulation. Sorry, there should be, have been a P in there. Um, a Ginsberg formulation um, of the, K, of the um, algebraic surface, um, of the K3 algebraic surface, and then taking an asymmetric orbifold, and it turns out that with... Um, discrete torsion. <coughs> it gives a particular four-dimensional um, gauged n equals four supergravity, which has a vacuum which breaks to a uh, Minkowski vacuum breaking it spontaneously to n equals two. And interestingly, it was outs it's um, outside the classification of such vacua, of such breakings of n equals four to n equals two given by um, Horst, Louis, and Smythe. And interestingly, the massless sector is an n equals two supersymmetric theory compact of, um, uh, which is n equals two super uh, matter coupled to n equals two supergravity. 
And um, it turns out to be that in some of the cases, it turns out to be a very familiar model, the one known as the STU model, which has got a moduli space which has got three factors of SL2 over U1. And, um, and in other cases, it's this model plus a small number of extra hypermultiplets. So we see that the number of massless scalars is much less than you'd get from a, ge a generic um, Calabi-L compactification. But it's st there's still, but still there's, um, in these examples, there's still a number of massless moduli. So um, I'm nearly out of time, so let me conclude. Um, I've talked about um, non-geometries which give rise to supersymmetric um, Minkowski vacuum of string theory with few massless moduli. Uh, are, and these arise from these non-geometric uh, reductions where um, we reduce on circles with monodromies which are um, non-geometric uh, transformations in O420. And so we have um, some particular examples which give rise to supersymmetry and few massless moduli. And uh, my suspicion is that there's going to be many, many more uh, general kinds of um, so-called non-geometric structures which will have similar, prop which, will give, which will preserve supersymmetry and some may have fewer or even no massless moduli. And it will be very interesting to explore the landscape of these um, structures and to see whether they, sh they really should be inclu uh, fully included in the landscape of phenomenologically relevant compactifications. And it would be interesting to further to understand the physics which arises from these uh, kinds of backgrounds. It's, it's very interesting that the mirrored automorphism, that the, um, the particular automorphism which arose involved both K3 and its mirror at the same time. And it's very suggestive that there, to, there might be some bigger picture. In other words, we somehow, the string theory both sees both um, the K3 and its mirror at the same time, and that maybe the structure should involve some doubling involving string, string theory seeing both of these at the same time in some a more general structure. And it will be very interesting to understand further the general mathematical structure associated with all this. Um, and this gives um, one way of generalizing um, Calabial. There are many others in the literature involving, um, which are also other generalizations of Calabial, for example, involving fluxes and so on. And it'd be very interesting to see how um, uh, putting these, how these two kinds of generalizations um, might fit, to, these various kinds of generalizations might fit together and further on what the, f the full landscape of such structures are. Um, the ones we've constructed, I think, um, perhaps are not um, going to be directly relevant to physics. But it's, I think it's the beginning of a story where there may, there may be many more such um, backgrounds which may have, uh, which are certainly interesting uh, backgrounds to explore as far as understanding the, what can happen in string theory. And um, uh, who knows, maybe they will also, there in the end, um, t may be of interest also from constructing physical models. So on that note, I'll thank you for your attention. Um, at, at, the minimum, at the minimum of the potential, there's a, um, a, a, um, a superconformal field theory description. Um, for, there's a whole class, there's, there's a list of models, each of which has got a, a unique conformal field theory. But there's, um, I, but the starting point is choosing a particular polynomial, a particular algebraic surface, and it's a different story for different choices of these algebraic surfaces. But for each of those models, there's a unique. Um, there is um, a superconformal field theory description which is unique up to the usual sorts of uh, equivalences and dualities. Yes, there's a, th there is there is an, a well-defined underlying conformal superconformal field theory. Yes. At the, at the minimum of the potential, yes. Um. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm talking about, when I, when I talk about superconformal field, yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, let me clarify, when I'm talking about superconformal field theories, I'm talking about um, the um, two-dimensional world sheet theory. Um, and so, as usual, for a string background, we require, um, with supersymmetric string background, we require a 2 comma 2 superconformal field theory on the world sheet. So in that sense, that it's a superconformal field. For ADS vacua, um, um, we ha we haven't yet, but I think um, I think it's um, it's very likely that there's going to be um, generalizations of this sort of story. I mean, I mean, this is a general kind of story where, um, given anything you can do geometrically, you can look for extensions where you have um, duality transformations in the um, um, Transition for and the gluing, and so I th so that so I, I would have thought that it's very likely that there will be such a, a story also with ADS vacua. So it's, so this would um, be helping to understand the question about given a four-dimensional supergravity in ADS, for example, or in Minkowski space. Um, so some of them we know that they have a supergravity lift, but in the case where it doesn't have a supergravity lift. Um, um, something which might be, which might be, and so might look as if it's in the swampland. In some cases, it can have a lift to some sort of non-geometric construction. And so it'd be, and so I think understanding the, um, the non-geometric constructions which can arise there, I think is, a, is a, an interesting story. And again, there's, I would expect that there would be interesting things happening in ADS space, but none of those have been constructed as yet, as far as I'm aware. 